Travelling to the Isle of May, Scotland, in search of puffins. The Isle of May is located five miles off the coast of Fife, in the mouth of the Firth of Forth. Each year, from April to August, the island becomes home to around 200,000 seabirds, which colonise the island to breed. You can see razorbills, guillemots, shags, arctic terns, and of course, puffins. Good morning, and what a morning it is here in Anstruther and Fife. I'm here uh, to get a ferry, which is just over my left shoulder, to the Isle of May, and it will take about 45 minutes to an hour to get to the island. The Isle of May is home to lots of different birds, as I mentioned previously, but today my main focus is going to be on the puffins and photographing them both in the air and on the ground. In terms of camera settings, I'm going to have to use a really high shutter speed and hopefully uh, get some really crisp shots of those puffins, hopefully lots of food in their mouths as well. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to today and couldn't have asked for a better day weather-wise. The Isle of May is only 1.5 kilometres long and 0.5 kilometres wide, so it can be easily navigated in the two to three hours which you'll be on the island for. I've highlighted with stars some of the best photo spots for puffin photographs. The boat arrives at Kirkhaven, which is located in the southwest of the island. Before reaching the puffins, you will need to pass the Arctic Tarn colony, which is close to the harbour. The terns become very territorial during the nesting season and will protect their nests by pecking anyone who comes near. You should definitely wear a hat. I headed south to Lady's Bed, which was my favourite location to photograph flying puffins. If it is a bright day, you should try to have a shutter speed of 1 over 1250 or higher. This will likely mean you are using the largest aperture which your camera has, in my case, f4. If possible, keep ISO at 100 but increase to correctly expose the shot. I continued along the coast to South Horn, where I was able to photograph puffins with sand eels in their mouths. As these puffins were not flying, I reduced the shutter speed. The next stop, Pilgrim's Haven, provided closer encounters with the puffins, with the water as a backdrop. Further along the path, on the west coast of the island, I came to Greenface. The cliff face is home to many birds, so it's a great spot for photography. Crossing from the South Plateau to the East Braes, I walked up Holy Man's Road where there were opportunities to photograph the puffins in the grass and flower beds. This made a nice change from the water and rocks which were in most of my previous shots. My final stop was Bishop's Cove, where I got some more good shots of puffins with sand eels in their mouths. If you're visiting the island exclusively for photographing puffins, I highly recommend that you spend less time walking between all the locations and focus on three or four, spending longer each.
Unfortunately, my time had run out and I had to return to the ferry to get back to the mainland. So the Isle of May is way more amazing than I was expecting it to be. There are so many puffins. I think it's 92,000 altogether. Um, we're only on shore for two and a half hours and to be honest, it's not even nearly long enough. So I've not been able to explore as much as I wanted to. The best time to visit the Isle of May to photograph puffins is May to July. Visiting during these months will more or less guarantee that you can photograph puffins at many locations across the island. You can book ferry tickets at isleofmayferry.com. I suspect, like me, you will not regret it and wish you had more time to explore.